Tuesday morning, although it feels like Monday. Tuesday it is. Feels like Tuesday to me. Does it? It's a short week. It's Tuesday it already. We're awesome. there. Boom. Tomorrow's yes. hump day. <laughs> Just like that. Bumps like Thursday. And right then, around the corner. And then TGIF. So, hey, folks, it's going to be a great short week. I hope you had an awesome Thanksgiving weekend. Did you, sir? Beautiful. Yes. Combination weekend. Mr. Bowser's birthday was Saturday. Yes. Thanksgiving dinner at my sister's at the cottage was on Sunday. We oh, celebrated. We did dinner on Sunday, lovely. and it was there were twenty five of us with three turkeys. <gasps> yeah, and my brother in law did. My brother in law is amazing. Well, it's Richard Richard Barsanti from Barsanti's like. Oh, so he can cook. I'm just thinking. Just a little bit. <laughs> um, one of the turkeys he actually did over the spit. Oh, nice. And then two were oven roasted. <gasps> and then, uh, you know, sweet potatoes, mashed potatoes, oh, turnips. Oh, yeah, you got to have it all. Egg, gravy. My niece Katie made two, three homemade pumpkin pies. <gasps> Karen made three homemade apple pies and an apple crumble. Oh, my word, you guys. 25, 25, 25 of us. It was, and the weather was great. Keith was outside playing baseball with the kids on the beach. And my um, one of our nephews and nieces uh, and his wife got a, Dog, they have a nine-month-old puppy, so he's playing, throwing a ball, throwing a stick for the ball for the dog, and then throwing a ball for the kids. Wow! I just sat there watching, going, my heart is full. Oh, that's so awesome. What about you? You went to Espanoodles. Went to Espanola, and I guess there were ten of us on Saturday night for dinner. That's small considering you have like six hundred yes, relatives cousins, there. Yes, cousins. Yeah. Um, my brother came from Cambridge, which was awesome. Nice. My brother was here from Powell River, British Columbia. Wow. Mm -hmm. Is he still here? Yeah, he's, he's here now. for Wednesday. Awesome. He's awesome. my mom every day, spends the entire day with my mom for the whole time he's Aww, here. Aw, how yeah, sweet. It's a nursing home. He's beautiful. Good my brother's a lovely young man. Young man. <laughs> Sean, you owe me money. <laughs> so much money. Hey, anyway, you know, so you went to what? You know, you can... Did you deep fry your turkey? Pardon? Deep fry your turkey? Yes. No fires? No fires. That's okay because as long as there's no fires. Actually, when we got off air, Luann got in trouble on Friday because we had Aaron Gravel here from Fire Services talking about the fact that this is Fire Prevention Week. And actually, today is Fire Prevention Day nationally. I'm not deep frying a turkey today. She got in trouble because she deep fried her turkey. And then afterwards, My he brother said, did, not me. And after we got off air, he said, wait a minute, did you say you live in Espanola? Well, I don't care about that. <laughs> Just no, he well, was, thanks. He was funny. Thanks but anyway, it, it yeah. is Fire Prevention Day now. Do you know, I did not know this, why they chose, apparently why they chose this as Fire Prevention Day, Fire Prevention Week. Why? October the 8th, 1871. Remember the story of Mrs. O'Leary's cow? Mm-mm. You've never heard the story of Mrs. O'Leary's cow? I wasn't around in 1871. Well, you were born what, just shortly thereafter. So <laughs> Mrs. O'Leary had a, had, a had a barn. Mrs. O'Leary had a cow. It kicked over the, the lantern in the barn, and it set the barn on fire, and that caused the Great Chicago Fire of 1817. No way. Burned for 27 hours, 300 died, 100,000 <gasps> people left homeless, 17,000 structures destroyed because a cow kicked over a lantern. Way to go, barn. O'Leary. Yeah. Nice. I bet you the cow survived, too. Well, what did you I think about that. it? Where the barn lit, she'd take the... Anyway, so this is National Fire Prevention Day. It's Fire Prevention Week. This is their new campaign. Look, listen, learn. You can pick these up. They're all around town. The firefighters are all around town this week. These are great tools for kids. We, and for, well, for everybody. Talk, yes. Talking about kitchen safety, about heaters now that it's this time of the year, electricity, mm -hmm. uh, making sure your smoke detector works, finding two ways out of every room, etc., etc. Please be careful. My dad was a fire marshal at... Ebietti back in the day when Dom Tar was Ebietti in Espanola, and uh, we did an escape route. Yes. Yes, and like he he told us, you gotta like open up your window and jump out of there. They um and if you are a senior, they still have that program going on where you can call the fire department and a fire um fire person, person. like some air fire educator like Aaron, will actually come to your home, and sit down and do a fire plan with you. Awesome. Yes. That's a great idea. Yep. Terrific. Hey, you know what else is happening in the world? You know you have arrived when you can hire Ed Sheeran to sing flippin' happy birthday to you. Who did that? Bruno Mars. Just, you know, hanging out for his birthday. The cake must have been Where that tall. What city? I don't know. It was on Twitter. <laughs> so Bruno Mars is sitting there behind the cake, can barely see him, with a knife and a fork, and he's eating chunks of cake. And Ed, Ed Sheeran's just sitting there singing him happy birthday. So he, was he invited to the party or did he have to hire him? Well, somebody, the, the headline says, you know you've made it when you can hire Ed Sheeran. Now, wait a second. I'm so sure he didn't hire I can't him. Even there imagine. it is. 
Oh, see, no, look at see, that. I, can you imagine, be like, hi, Ed, it's my, it's my, it's, hey, is Bruno sporting a fro? Yeah, he is there. Looks great, eh? Yeah, you think? Beautiful hair. I'm no. not fond of fros. Oh, God, no, never happened. beautiful. I had a fro once. You mean you had a perm? Mm. That's not a fro. Mm. Okay, well. Felt like a fro. I had a perm once, too. Yeah. 1982. Yeah. I was, well, I was very, very skinny, and I had a perm, and if <laughs> so I wore fuzzy look slippers, like... I look like a Q-tip. <laughs> Anybody wasn't, clean wasn't their ears with you? And it was like slick back on the sides and curly. Oh, oh, I looked like a poodle. Awesome. How old were you? What we've done. Um, I was probably 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like seriously, I call it mamere really hair tight curls. because it looked like my grandmother's hair. <laughs> Look at my mamere hair pictures. I'm like, see, people don't realize how so old proud. we are. We're old. Mike just came in from the control room. He came into the green room and he says, hey, look, see this video? Remember this video from when you were kids? It was Godzilla, 1995. I said, I was a kid in 1965, not 1995. He said, Lou, remember this? She, I was like, no, she was, she I was, had three kids by then. She was raising her own little monsters. <laughs> Godzilla, I watched the, I watched Godzilla in the, in the 1960s in black and white with the Japanese and the, and the sound didn't match. You know what? They are WKVD so, Channel 50. like it has to be a classic to watch that because it's so campy. But the one that Mike got is like a, this DVD thing. Oh, that scares it me. Normally retails for $135. What? what? Kind of a Godzilla movie sells for $135. For Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Godzilla. Oh God. I mean, I like that expression now. Godzilla. Oh my Godzilla. Oh, for Zilla. Hey, you know who came back to work? Megan McCain. Oh, she back on yeah, TV? Yeah, she went back on Fridays, and, and it was very emotional for her, you know? Yeah. She looks awesome, though. Gosh, I was looking at her eye makeup thinking, gee whiz, uh, she's I rich. like somebody. She's rich, and she has somebody to do that for her. Yeah. Have, she goes in in the morning, she sits in a chair, and they do everything for her. Yes. If we could do that, we'd both look great, well, too. You could do that for me. What the heck's wrong with you? You can't come in that quarter to No, if I did your makeup, you'd end up looking like a 78-year-old Jewish widow because that's who I... Oh, there's Megan McCain. Look at See, she's stunning. And she said, my father... What would her father have thought about? They asked her about, you know, eulogizing her dad and how difficult that must have been. And she said, he he raised me to be a tough person. And she said, he wanted me to come back here to the show. And that's why I'm here. Good for her. Yeah. Of course, yeah. it was Columbus Day in the States yesterday. Was it? Yes. So what does that mean? They, well, it's uh, Discovery Day. It's the day that Christopher Columbus, right? I guess, did he discover America? I don't, I don't know. know. They celebrate Christopher Columbus. but And, and traditionally, at least in the last while, um, the president would make a speech and he would acknowledge Native Americans. ha <laughs> ha <laughs> He was busy second year, Second year in a row, he did a Columbus Day speech where he talked about Columbus and he never mentioned the fact that Columbus led to the destruction of the Native American culture, taking their land, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. The whole invasion of Turtle Island. And, the, and he did not even acknowledge for the second year in a row. And people were just like, really? He was too busy telling everyone that would uh, possibly be listening that Brett Kavanaugh is innocent. Pr Proven innocent. Proven innocent. He and he said, apologized on behalf of the country. Poor Brett. Poor, poor Brett. I'm so glad. You know what? I just have to move on from that. Yeah. And I, wouldn't it be something, wouldn't it be amazing if after all of this, they don't overturn Roe versus Wade and they don't go back on that the things for LGBTQ awesome. rights and they don't, like maybe it won't happen. You never, I don't know. Maybe, uh, we can hope. Yeah, it um, would feel so much like taking 185 steps backwards, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, what was the whole- For Godzilla. Trump? For Godzilla. He just, there was something about, res oh, what was the thing that he was passing about if you're, um, an ambassador to the U.S. from another country, and you have a same-sex. Oh yeah, you can't bring. The, you can't bring can't a same-sex spouse or partner. They won't give them a visa. No. Nope. In Amer in, a, in the United States of America, yeah. they are denying visas to the same-sex partners of ambassadors from other countries. Yep. <laughs> what? But, uh, They're denying visas on the on the basis of sexual orientation. Yeah. I don't get it. Isn't that a little? How can they do that? Oh, I don't want to use that word, but. Yeah. Hitler-like? Mm. 
I find. Yeah. I'm getting I don't know. tense again. <laughs> 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 Already need the chiropractor. We're What's going on in. today on the show? <laughs> oh, pitch. Pitch. Yes, pitch. I'm so glad you didn't look at me and say... <laughs> <laughs> pitch. <laughs> no, with a P. Um, Northern Ontario Angels. They are a group of people who try to find funders to go with people who have innovative ideas for business and entrepreneurial ideas. And so it's kind of like Shark Tank, kind of, sort of. Seriously? Yeah, it's coming up in two days. It's my first interview. Coming up in two awesome. days. you got to check it out. If you're an entrepreneur, watch this or if you know somebody. You go, you, you do your pitch in front of an audience, and in the audience <gasps> there are investors and people from the Northern Ontario Angels who help you find investors. Very cool. Check awesome. out the interview coming up. And then my second interview is, oh, Jay Amar. We're having a contest. His oh, uh, yeah. CD tuned. release party is coming up the end of this week on Saturday, so we're going to give away some tickets. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. More Mornings with Luann and Tim after this. I am Skyping today with Mary Long Irwin, and Mary is in Thunder Bay right now. Mary Long Irwin is the Executive Director of the Northern Ontario Angels. Now, I had not heard of this organization, but uh, they've been around for a while. Welcome, Mary, to On TV. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So now, you said, I believe you told me, is it about 15 years the Northern Ontario Angels have been around? Correct. It's been about 15 years, the first five, six years. They spent just trying to educate and get a feel of the investment, basically the investment appetite, so to speak, in Northern Ontario. Putting out feelers well and that company. kind of thing, yes. eh? And then um, I got hired in, uh, I got hired about nine years ago. Oh. And I have been with them eight, nine years, and we have been doing a tremendous job in getting investments out to the companies across Northern Ontario. So brilliant. Now, tell me a little bit about your personal background. How did you come to this? Uh, do you have experience as an entrepreneur or a business person? Or where? what's your background? Well, I have 10 years of self-employment here in Thunder Bay. Yes. And then I have 10 years of small business lending all along the North Shore. And then it was 10 years as a CEO, president of the Thunder Bay Chamber of Commerce, and NOAC, the Northern uh, Regional Chambers across the North. Wow, so you definitely know firsthand what it's like to be a, a small business owner operator and then you've had a lot of contact with Northern Ontario businesses over these past 30 years really, wow. That's right. So tell me about the concept of Northern Ontario Angels for other people like myself who were, aren't familiar with the organization. What is it that exactly that you set out to do? We match in a nutshell, we match companies with investors or investors with companies. In the past, before we'd had this program, if there was a really good technology company and they needed some investments, because it, it can be difficult at times to get money from traditional funding sources, from banks, etc. if you had an idea in technology and you needed several hundreds of thousands of dollars in order to move your technology for, forward, it's not bricks and mortar. So it was always a challenge. So we would get investors from either the Minnesota or Toronto area. They would look at the companies and say, I will invest in this, but you have to move to Toronto or you have to move to Minneapolis. Oh. <laughs> and that was a challenge for the North. We have amazing talent here. We have brilliant minds here in the North. We have universities that educate them, that they can work alongside. But sometimes it was a challenge to get them funding. And more and more, I would say, former business owners, the more the wealthier people, if you will, have decided that they made their wealth right here in Northern Ontario, and they were determined to help grow that wealth, to help grow the economy. 
And so they stepped up to the plate and said, I will invest in businesses located in the north. And they have stepped up to the plate in great numbers. Now, Mary, let me ask you, when you liaise these um, investors with the entrepreneurs or the businesses, uh, is there... A is there connection as far as mentoring goes? I mean, these people who've made their money, and as you say, there are these are successful business people, usually from the north, that are reinvesting in their communities. Do they stay involved with the companies in which they're investing to a degree? In other words, sort of mentoring, giving advice. Is that something that you encourage, or is it really a sort of an arm's length thing? That's something we strongly encourage, and that's also what makes us very unique here in the north. There are angel networks all across Canada. And in Northern Ontario, they tend to provide more mentoring. They, they tend to handhold the entrepreneur, especially for the first year. And the entrepreneur has a great benefit from that. Just imagine all the contacts that that investor has. Now that investor is introducing them. Or the investor may have a very skilled financial person on staff. And the investor will say, okay, I'll put this investment in. And I will also give you my financial person one or two days a month for the first year. And it's a huge value. Well, and then that's helping secure their investment then because not exactly. only have they got a, a young entrepreneur with, with uh, ideas and spirit and chutzpah and, and you know, they, then they've got the experience of someone they trust as an investor to help mentor that person as well. That's a brilliant combination. Well, if you can imagine, if you've developed a product and now you want to go into, let's say, Canadian Tire, the chances of you getting in the door are not as great as it would be if you had an investor who already has all those contacts. <laughs> and now they're walking in the door with you. Absolutely. Your chances that door opening are much greater. Hey, and you know, the other thing with Northern Ontario communities is, particularly Sault Ste. Marie now, you probably know that we were very much a one or two industry town. We had pulp and paper and we had the steel plant. We have the steel plant. Um, but to a certain degree, I think as a community, Sault Ste. Marie is realizing more and more that we can't have all our eggs in one basket. And That's we're right. trying to encourage youth to stay. We want that re youth retention. Um, and so entrepreneurial spirit and, and entre entrepreneurial ventures are one way to keep the youth here by encouraging them to create their own businesses, uh, to develop that and, and be able to come back to their hometowns or even stay in their hometowns. And so I would see the Ontario, uh, um, sorry, the Northern Ontario Angels as um, helping that process. Would you That's agree? That's right, and they have. And they have. You've had some brilliant ideas. Unfortunately, a lot of them because of private businesses we can't speak to them, um, but I, generally speaking, you've had some great technology ideas come out of the Sioux, mm -hmm. and it's been, um, it's been of great value because, like you said, you cannot always work in the same industries that have been there forever. They're not there anymore, at least not in the numbers. Right. Pulp and paper, steel, keep going on and on. It, the face of the community is changing, and a lot of the young people want to stay here. And if we don't find a way to keep them here, then what happens is they leave, have kids. Now their grandparents, who are from the Sioux, are following the kids. And they're right. leaving with all of their money and leaving you the know, community. I never thought about that. that. That's true. No, I never thought about that, Mary. That's true, too. Yeah, they do. And um, so now you're going to have this event in the Sioux. Yes. And it's called Pitch. Yes. Now, these happen all over, right? But the, our... They happen all over, yes. When is ours happening? Yours is happening October the 11th at the Quattro Hotel and Conference Center. Are you coming? Everybody is welcome. Yes, I'm going to be oh, there. Oh, okay, great. Everybody is welcome. And what it is, think of it like a Dragon's Den style pitch. Oh. The only difference is the investors will be in the crowd because we keep our investors confidential because otherwise they would be inundated by calls all the time. Makes so sense. they're in the crowd, and the person makes a pitch in front of four, three or four judges. They ask some questions, and the pitch is about five, six minutes long. Then there's some questions, and then they leave, and the next pitch comes up. And you will see four or five great pitches from the Sioux. And at the end of the evening, Investors will decide if they want to invest, and then we introduce them. Oh, my gosh. That's so exciting. And anybody, <coughs> anybody can go and watch this all happen? 
anybody can go and watch. And it's a really fun night. It's only $10, and you're served food. I mean, oh. what's, you know... The food from Quattro is really good, too, by the way. If you haven't had it before, it you're going to love it. very good. Uh, tell me again, I'm sorry, the date and the time, Mary. It's October the 11th, and I believe it's at 5 p.m. I found you on the Internet. 7. It's not very hard to find out that information. You can Google Pitch Sault Ste. Marie, and, and it'll all come up. Yeah. Right. Or just go northernontarioangels.ca. You have a great website. I enjoyed looking at yes. it, actually. Very informative. And, uh, you know, Mary, also with technology the way that it is, there really isn't the need for people to move to southern Ontario or larger centres anymore. There's so much that can be done, you know, in these smaller communities and allow us to have this great quality of life that we enjoy so much in northern Ontario. So I think yes. that the Northern Ontario Angels are really making that possible, too. Well, we've been very fortunate. We've been the number one angel group across the country for over five years in a row, wow. meaning we've done more deals than any other angel group, which says a lot, but that's because we have some amazing investors. They give back to the community, and don't get me wrong, they, they are, are they're expecting their money back, their investment back, well, yes. plus a return on the investment, but then that helps them help the next company. But they step up to the plate as far as mentoring. They open up their network. It's just tremendous how that works here in the north. And we are the envy of the Toronto, the Calgary, the Vancouver, the Quebec part of the world. We're an envy because we have been successful. But more importantly, our angels really step up to the plate so we match them very well well congratulations on your success thank you and uh, i look forward to uh, seeing you here in sault ste marie at the quattro hotel for the event and um i'd love to do a follow-up with you afterwards if there's uh, anything that comes out of this i would love for you to stay in touch and let us know well i do want to point out this will be the second one we've done in the Sioux. And the first one, we had four pitches, and three of them got investments and are up and running. So it's no. been, yes. Phenomenal. Mary Long, I Irwin, I want to thank you for your time. This has been great fun talking with you. So informative, and best of luck to you and the Northern Ontario Angels. Thanks for all you're doing for our communities up here in the north. Thank you, and I look forward to meeting you as well. All right. Bye for now, Mary. Bye-bye. And we'll be right back with more Mornings with Lou Ann and Tim right after this. You missed all the excitement on Friday. I did, yes. Yes, because on the way back from the airport, Sharon and Bram stopped in on TV. <gasps> Donna Hilson, of course, from the you know, executive yes. director fall festival, right? So she picks all the celebrities up at the airport. So she picked up Sharon and Bram, and she and I said, would you, do you think? Because so many fans oh of Sharon my. and Bram, grown adult fans. Yes. And a lot of them are right here at On TV. So um, she swung them by right from the airport to here. She, Isn't that awesome? But there are two musicians, uh, Grant and, oh, what was the other guy's name? Anyway, what was it? Kirk. Kurt. Anyway, they came and Riley interviewed them. You can check it out if you want. It's, uh, it's probably, well, I know it's on our View On Demand. And mm -hmm. I think they posted it on Sue Online, too. Interview with Sharon and Bram. He actually, Kevin, one of our guys here, mm -hmm. brought in his guitar because he loved, he saw them as a kid and he loved them. They autographed his guitar. They, Bram played the guitar. Wow. Here what? in the studio and sang Skinner Marink. And Keith came because he wanted to meet them because he, he, his childhood, you know, heroes sure. kind of thing. And um, I, Keith sang along with Skinny Marink right beside oh. Sharon. And then he did the whole, I love you. And he blew a kiss with Sharon. I was tearing up. Oh. And then he loved her so much, he bought a ticket for the show the next day. Oh, that's so awesome. And he so went and watched awesome. Sharon Way and, go, and sang along for his birthday. That's brilliant. I know. They were just amazing. Watch the interview. It's great. Ronnie did a great job. And they're so, uh, they're on their, their farewell. 40th farewell tour. Yeah. They're going to continue to record and stuff, but they're not going to tour anymore. No, no more live. So. Well, they're, they're getting a little. Oh, well, yeah. They've been together and they've had the musicians with them for 30 years. Oh, my gosh. The country, so. Really? Yeah. God, it's got to be weird without Sharon. Lois. Lois, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I guess... Um, they, they didn't really talk about that no. much in the interview, but I, I mean, they don't, it's not like they've forgotten her. Oh, <laughs> no, she was gosh. A huge part of it. No. But they've carried on. Well, sure, it's been and five years. And also, her or so husband, now. I believe, Sharon's husband, 
her late husband, also was very involved in writing and stuff. So oh. they've gone through some transition. They've suffered some loss over the years. But, you know, the bottom line was it was all about sharing the love with the kids and the sing-along and just all of that give and take. They, and you know what? There are some uh, kids performers that you watch and you think, yeah, you should find another line of work. <laughs> These people just... So sincere. So sincere. Truly, truly just love their Beautiful. job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Hey, you know what? Mm -mm. Something that you can look forward to on Thursday, Kanye West is going to have lunch at the White House with President Trump. <sighs> Before that, he's going to meet Jared uh, Kushner because he wants to talk about uh, job opportunities for the convicted people. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. Okay. <laughs> he, needs to, he just needs to read a book. I mean, if you read... <laughs> oh. <laughs> just, okay, that that Kanye involves reading. Just read a book. I yeah. can maybe, maybe... Just learn some history. You know what? He could go to the University of Toronto and read a book because the University of Toronto has just announced that they're going to offer a course on Donald Trump. Yes, it's Donald Trump morning this morning on Mornings with Luann and Tim. I'm getting a rash. <laughs> elections. Speaking of elections, we have a better chance of doing... We could, we could do far. The Americans didn't do so well with their last election, but we have an election coming up and we can all make a difference and do good things because I, you can't lose when you vote. No, you can't. Unless you vote for Trump. Um, <laughs> advanced polls are open uh, tomorrow. They've already had one. And the next one is tomorrow, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So you can do advanced voting at City Hall if you want to. And today, live at noon, a debate. A debate. We're ward doing the, all the wards, right? Yes. And is Ward 2 the huge ward? No, it's not. Yes. It's not as big as, I think there's a bigger one than Ward oh. 2. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we're going we'll to do Ward check. 2 today at noon live, so tune in and watch that. Meanwhile, you're doing the news next? I'm doing the news next. All right. So, but first we're going to go to commercial and then a news with Luann and then an interview with J. A. Mar, who has a new CD coming out. He's coming home to Sault Ste. Marie for a CD release party at the Tech this Saturday. And after the news, we're going to uh, do our draw for free tickets for J. A. Mar, plus give you the next trivia question so you can win tickets for this weekend to see J. live in concert with his five-person roots band. And thank you so much for watching us. We always appreciate when you show up. Stay tuned, we have a bunch more ahead on Mornings with Luann and Tim. I'm a fool to do your dirty work, oh yeah. I don't want to do your dirty work no more. I don't know what that song was, but I was enjoying it. It's lovely. I watched Dancing with the Stars. Did you? Oh! Really? There's some amazing performances on Seriously? that show. Well, yesterday, there was the one that I watched was the most memorable year one. Oh, which was when they talk, apparently that was really emotional. And they all cry. They all oh. cry. Everybody cries. Mary Lou Retton talking about... She had... She popped her knee on a landing and had to have knee surgery six weeks weeks before the Olympics. What? And she's got that perfect score at the Olympics six weeks after surgery. Wow. The doctors told her she would not be able to compete and she did it anyway. She said she's paying the price now because her body is a disaster. But well, I bet. Really great stories. Really great dancing. Really she's an doll too. Oh, she yeah. She seems like she'd be just really approachable and fun. And yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, you know, it's a, it's a fun show, but it's also there's, a, there's some great messaging in there. There's mm -hmm. a, yeah. Um, okay, so... Speaking of stars, Jay Amar is a local, well, he's not really a local celebrity anymore. He's like a Canadian celebrity now. Right. He's from Sault Ste. originally. And uh, for many, many years, I mean, he's based in Toronto, but for many years, he never even had a place to call home. He just toured everywhere, traveled all the time. But that was sort of the, the motivation for his songwriting. And so he's got his sixth CD coming out. And as I mentioned in the, in the little preview there, we're doing a contest. So, uh, yes, Your Perfect Matador is the CD being released this Saturday at the Tech Theatre. Um, it's at, uh, let's see, 8 o'clock this Saturday. $25 in advance, $30 at the door. And I have two tickets right here to give away. Now, I also have two tickets in an envelope sitting in the office waiting for someone to win. In here are the names of the people who submitted the correct answer via email. Um, what was the question? The question was, what is the name of the first track 
on Jay's new CD. Okay, name of the first track. Yeah, and okay. let's see who'd you get. Karen G. Karen G, you are the winner of two tickets for Jay Amar's concert this Saturday. I have your email address because you wrote to me and gave me the correct answer. And so I will be emailing you back to let you know that you won. Congratulations. What is the correct answer? Now you were something about poet. Now you, why did you ask me that? <laughs> I didn't write it down. You, you go look for yourself. <laughs> anyway, why you gotta be like that? Why you gotta be like that? God, Zilla. Something about a poet. About a poet. <laughs> it was like a bloody poet or something. It's a. I, well, it, it, okay. Anyway, look at here's two more tickets. Karen, have a great time. She will. Yes. And the next trivia question. So the interview is coming up next. Yes. With Jay. So right. watch the interview, mm -hmm. and after you've watched the interview, send me an email to Timothy at SuperiorMedia.ca. Before midnight tonight, it has to be tam ta tam stamp. Tam tam time tam. stamp before midnight tonight. So you can be watching this at 10 o'clock and still enter the contest. The question is, how many children in J. Amar's family? He meant, we mentioned it in the interview. So watch the interview and after the interview. So like over, who he grew up with, not like his own not children. His, no, not his own children. He is one of how many children? You answered that question correctly. Send me an email before midnight tonight. All the names will go in that little bowl tomorrow I say morning. 82. You're incorrect. <laughs> and uh, then I'll do the draw tomorrow morning live on the show, and we'll awesome. give away these two tickets tomorrow, and then this we're going to continue fun. on. Tomorrow. I know, right? That's so fun. I know. Um, so now, what's next on the show? Oh, J.A. Mar's interview. J.A. Mar. yes. So we'll be back after this commercial message with the J.A. Mar interview, and then you can enter the trivia question. So... Don't go anywhere. More. Pay attention. Morning to Luann and Tim right after this. Dreaming again about paradise found. The state that I'm in, man, there's so many songs, there's too many lines to write them for you, to make them all mine. I know it's rough when you look in my eyes. I play the truth wherever it lies, and it's all. Via Skype in the studio is Jay Amar himself, local Sault Ste. Marie boy, <laughs> one of many Amars here in Sault Ste. Marie, currently living in Toronto. Uh, finally, did you finally get a home down there, Jay, or what? You went on the road uh, so much of your career. Yeah, just just temporarily. Yeah, first time in ten years. I'm uh, I'm hanging for a few months at a at a place. So uh, this is the life you love, though, isn't it? I mean, and it's, it's so much a part of your music. Is uh, Your music comes from your travels, from your career, from the people you meet, the places you go. Is that true, would you say? Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, I call it my get-rich-quick scheme. <laughs> what didn't you know, happen so quickly, though. I, oh, no, 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 that's true. Yeah. And yeah, you're not any, rich yet, as far as I know. I, I was, uh, ran into a, another songwriter last week at the camera house, and I said... Uh, uh, he he said, Amar, are you still a flat tire away from bankruptcy? Because that was a line I said to him about eight years ago. And I said, no, maybe two tires away. But, uh, no, no, it's good. It's all good, man. Okay, so tell me a little bit about how music came to you growing up in Sault Ste. Marie. Was it your brother gave you a guitar or something? Was that the story? That's the story, yeah. I've been telling that story recently. When I wrote my book, I had accidentally said my father came home with a guitar from the, the city dump. To make it sound like we were on poverty row, but that's not true. Um, we were just, we just grew up we grew up on Weldon Avenue across from Clary. We were just in one of the wartime houses, and uh, we had a piano in there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, my brother Phil one day came home with a guitar that his his friend Mike Chevrier had given to him, and it was uh, it had a lot of battle scars and it played pretty rough. But uh, Phil taught me my first couple of chords, and before and then, you know it, I was learning Rocky Raccoon and. 
off to the Heart races. Gold and stuff like that, yeah. When did you discover you had a talent for writing, Jay? Uh, well, that was more in probably uh, grade seven or grade eight. I, I, they had an assignment. Actually, um, I was in Mr. Damignani's class, St. Bernadette. They closed down St. James, and we got shipped over to St. Bernadette in grade five. Yeah. Mr. Damignani was, uh, and his wife, Mrs. Damignani, they were running a contest uh, for writing short stories and poems and stuff. And I just wrote a, a weird little poem. And at the end of the uh, at the end of the whole thing, they said, "Did you did you really write this?" And I said, "Why?" They said, "Well, it seems like it was written by somebody a little older." And I said, "No, I really did." And so they they had a team meeting and they they agreed I should meet a local author named Frank Patchy. Oh, who had yeah, some yeah, I know that name. Yeah, the Italians and the Black Madonna and uh, it was really cool. So I ended up uh, meeting him, and they took a picture of me with him as a little young writer, and they put it in the uh, in the bookcase, and that was my thing. You know, I really wanted to be a hockey player, but I was I had this overactive imagination. So <laughs> that was this that was the story. And now here you that's, are. That's so this is your latest of six albums. The first was released in 1996, right? Yeah. And you're an also, uh, but you, but you're not. Uh, I mean, you did carry on with your writing because you've also authored a book that was, uh, I guess the reviewer said it, it, don't know whether it's a CD with a book or a book with the CD, but either way, it's a great concept. Tell us a little bit yeah. about that. The, that was the, the book was called, uh, what about the, chi the, what, the, what, the chicken came first? Right. And, and other half truths about my life yes. uh, as a touring songwriter. I, I was, uh, so basically 10 years ago, I hit the open road permanently. I sold my possessions and just, um, I had a bit of a break with, uh, you know, some musical breaks, and I, I decided to do it full time, and uh, it was quite a thing to do that at middle age. And uh, halfway through that, I kept blogging and using all these tools, that, social media tools at our disposal, which is a, a big part of it these days. Um, and uh, through the, a lot of those blogs uh, turned into like a newsletter, and uh, I called it Road Stories, and it became pretty well read. And I noticed it was really increasing the attendance at my shows and. People were getting mentions in it and stuff. And uh, at one point, I just realized I wanted to have something a little more tangible. So I thought, when I'm old and gray and I'm looking back on it all, and I'll have something to hold and maybe uh, hand around to people. So that was the idea. It's just it's uh, ten brief little road stories about in crazy things that have happened to me along the way, and we we put a live CD. Uh, 10 songs as voted on by my fan base, and we recorded it live at the uh, Trinity in uh, oh, I Toronto, saw, in Scarborough here, yeah. I saw and, the video uh, from Trinity. The, the, you were right. That was beautiful sound in that church. Yeah, cool. Um, and uh, you've been compared to a lot of really uh, impressive artists. Uh, I actually, when I was hearing some of your lyrics, there was the one from um, All I Know. Is that the name of the song? Yeah. I was hearing you sing it and listening to the lyrics, and I thought, this guy reminds me of Leonard Cohen. I, I'm just going to go over this lyric that I love. It's, what if these fables all come to pass, or the answer exists in one blade of grass? Maybe we're all just molecular mass, compounds of solids, liquids, and gas. All I know is I know nothing at all. I freaking love that. There you go, man. Yeah, no. Yeah, the, the, you're not the first one to say Cohen on this last release. I'm getting a lot of that. It's scaring me. I hope I didn't uh, subconsciously cop too much of them. But uh, <laughs> anyway, there's worse people to get compared to. Other high praise. Ian Tyson, yeah. for heaven's sakes, he recorded My Cherry Colored Rose. He liked it so well. He says yeah. that you've written a true Canadian, Canadian folk song, a classic. <laughs> Come on, that's got to give you goosebumps when you hear that from... Yeah, that was pretty wild. That's that's really what got me going on the road again. Uh, I had a call from Tyson um, when I was home in the Sioux, actually, just visiting my parents. And I had to drive my father to a to Dr. Nanny to, who was getting his tooth pulled. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, the phone rang just as my father was waiting to leave. And Tyson called and started saying he wanted to record that song and was telling me the whole thing. And meanwhile, my dad's in the background going, you know, What's taking you so long? Hang up. I don't care who it is. <laughs> so I, I had to say, uh, sorry, Mr. Tyson, I have to go bring my father to the dentist. <laughs> so he ended up, uh, he said, call me on Sunday night when you get back to Toronto or wherever you're at. And uh, so I did that. And he said, uh, I listened to, uh, I got my hands on your record. And 
we listened to it. He had his big 75th birthday party the night before he had mentioned and said that he had listened to the album and, uh, several times and thought I was an, an adequate writer and uh, said he wanted to record that song, and he did. And uh, it kind of, in a lot of ways, it, it really changed the game for me. Having Because he, he doesn't record a lot of people. Um, he's a writer in his own right, and he's just, uh, of his solo career, he's recorded very few people. Really flattering. And, and uh, other amazing reviews from the CBC broadcaster Rob Mercero uh, says that uh, you uh, have given up any idea of a home other than the road. You've become the modern troubadour at home everywhere and nowhere officially. You've learned the hard way, he says, and that uh, all of your experiences is what cr creates your music. Tell me, how would you describe your music as a style? Would you say folk rock? Uh, how, how do you, or do you even bother to label yourself? Well, no, it's, it's interesting because, like, for example, for this latest record, they, you know, we're, it, it's a pretty big release and, and we're dealing with industry people that are trying to figure out what segment of the radio listening public it has to be identified to. So uh, they don't know what to call it, really. Um, it used to be called kind of roots. Um, I would call it kind of roots. There's a little, you know, Americana maybe. All right, uh, but that's about it, you know that's about as close as I can get to defining it. I mean, for myself, what I'm really trying to do is is create something which is uh, it's literate, but it's also uh, accessible enough that it is appealing to maybe everybody. So in in some ways, I find Leonard Cohen can kind of get a little too heady or or too poetic, and I want to I want to be. I want my songs to still appeal to Stomp and Thomas fans as well as Leonard Cohen's fans, if that makes any sense. So it, it maybe makes ultimately a ton of I'm sense. trying to bridge that gap. You know, it makes a ton of sense. Uh, 2010 <laughs> Canadian Folk Music Award nomination for Best Emerging Artist. Uh, the passing through of folks blues hybrid record. You're really crossing all those the genres, and I think it's great. Jay, let's just talk now because you're coming home again, which is fantastic, and you're releasing a CD. Uh, um, and this is the, the, is it the Matador? Tell me the name. Right. Yeah, your perfect Matador. Your perfect Matador. Again, so poetic. When are you coming home? When can we come and see you? And where? It's uh, we're playing at the Tech Theater on October the thirteenth. It's a Saturday night. It starts at eight o'clock. Yeah. Um, I'm bringing my my five piece. So there'll be five of us up there. You are. Oh, and, the whole uh, yeah. gang's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be a it'll be a great night and. Uh, Tickets are on sale right now. You can find them, I think, at Stone's Office Supply or Itaca down on Queen Street nice. uh, or the Duke. Uh, you can find them. Is it the Rad Zone? Yeah, yeah. I believe that's one. Of, or you can just go to the Tech and find and buy them as well. That's great. So, and you yeah. have a you have a website too, Jay. Yeah. Is yeah, that just jamar.com? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That's where I found a lot of stuff about you. you. You've got a great career. You've had a great career. And uh, it's so nice for a, a hometown boy to come home again and uh, share all your success with us. And, I mean, you know, just the excitement of launching a new CD and, and you have a big, I mean, if your family alone shows up, that'll probably sell the place out, right? <laughs> yeah, we had a great we had a great turnout last year. So I'm hoping that people come and, you know, they, they're telling people tickets are moving really well. That's good. So I think we uh, were we need about another 150 people there. So hopefully you can you'll see this and you'll come out to the show and you'll be uh, and, you'll be surprised and, that there was a if they, songwriter if, writing songs about your hometown all this time and you didn't really know it. And you know, Jay, all anybody has to do, as far as I'm concerned, is check out any of your YouTube videos because that for me that sells you right there. I think I think as I say, you're a poet. You're a musician, you're a storyteller. Um, I love your style and uh, I wish you all the best and thanks for taking the time to Skype with us today. All right, thank you very much. Okay, we'll see you when you're home, Jay Amar, and uh, that's it for now. We'll be back with more Mornings with Lou Ann and Tim right after this. All come to pass, all the answer exists in one blade of grass. Maybe we're all just molecular mass. Compounds of solids, liquids and gas, and it's all.
And on TV wants to remind you, of course, that we are doing debates for every ward in the city. So on Thursday last week, we did Ward 1. Today, starting live at noon. We did it on Friday. Ward 2. No, we did it Thursday. Did we? Yep, we did on Thursday. Okay. So we have Ward 2, 3, 4, 5 this week. So stay tuned. We want to make sure you're informed when you go and cast your vote. So you can send me an email, Timothy, at superiormedia.ca if you have a question for Ward 2 candidates. We'll see you at noon. And thanks for tuning in. It's My Poet Bleeding was the name of the song. Ha ha. <laughs> see, you, see you at noon. <laughs> thanks.